Clark Kent. <laughs> Dual evil Clark Kent. Down. You can sit back down. I apologize for that. But uh, you want to have bizarre world Superman? You look in the mirror and there's evil Superman going on. They live together. Now. I don't know. I don't know. They call it the, which one? You call me. Which one's the evil? <laughs> What's your name, man? Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> Evil Jamie. <laughs> All right, coming up next, it's a proper military badass. My fellow veterans, <laughs> defenders of freedom. All of you punk bitches sit at home and dip your bread in gravy. And <laughs> your good intentions. You think oil just finds its way into your car. <laughs> Someone's got to go get that shit. Real man. <laughs> Silky, soft. Silk comes from the butts of Chinese worms. <laughs> Silky motherfuckers. But anyway, here he comes up. Badass motherfucker. And a very funny guy. He'll kill you with his words, too. <laughs> but yeah, put your hands together, or he'll kill you. <laughs> Mr. Steve Raymer! Woo! Well, your expectations is right now. <laughs> Right, my name is Steve Rimmer, and I like pubs, clubs, going to the cinema, I like socialising with friends, I like going out, I also like staying in. Now I know you all understand that sounds a little bit like a profile from a dating website, don't you? But well, it is, it's mine. And, uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is because you lot are listen, unlike those shallow women at home on the internet that take a look at this, you like, fuck that next. But uh, I am on this website and I'm looking for a girlfriend, and the type of woman I'm looking for, she's got to have a child, because I've got a little boy. And then, um, you know, we can do things together on a weekend, but you've got to ask the right questions with these women, because there is a lot of spinsters out there. You know, women that have photographs with their, their nephews and nieces and stuff like that, so it makes them appear to me like the type of woman I want. So I write them the message, I say, uh, Hi, my name's Steve. I like kids. I like that profile picture of you with your kid. Have you got any more pictures of your kids? <laughs> yeah. just, uh, they never get back to me. To you know, actually, thinking about it, I don't even know if I really, really want a relationship because I was in love once and you do some crazy things when you're in love, don't you? Like, uh, my girlfriend at the time, she was cheating on me and I knew she was cheating on me but uh, I didn't want to confront her with it because we'd break up and I loved her and that'd break my heart. And then, um, actually, the reason why I knew she was cheating on me is because I went down on her once and I could taste condoms. <laughs> yeah, sick, innit? And I knew it wasn't us because, like, I, we didn't use condoms because I was in love, and everyone knows you can't get AIDS when you're in love. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. But, uh, I know what else you're thinking. How do you know what condoms taste like? Well, uh, you've heard that saying, haven't you? What would you do for a million pounds? Well, uh, this guy said to me, he said, Would you suck my dick for a million pounds? I said, yeah, of course I will, but I'm going to put a condom on it, I'm not gay, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, anyways, at the end of it, his laugh was on him, because it turned out he never even had a million pounds, so... <laughs> he's a loser, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, eventually, eventually I did get my heart broken proper, because, you know, we did break up, and what happened was, is I caught air catching me cheating on her, you see. I walked into the room, and <laughs> she was with this guy, I had eye contact with her, I had eye contact with him, I had eye contact with the other guy. I mean, we all have eye contact, <laughs> don't we? But we argued and we broke up, it broke my heart. But uh, that wasn't the worst part of it. The worst part of it is I can't actually watch free internet porn anymore. <laughs> because, uh, you know, one day I'm going to stumble across some footage of me crying in the background trying to sneak out of the room. Uh, you know what I mean? so, that's no good, is it? Um, let's try and change my little mood because I'm a bit depressed now I've brought all that up. Um, I've recently turned 32. And um, I want 32 to be a good, cool year for me, you know. But let's be honest, anyway, three to two's ever going to look good is with double D on the end of it, do you know what I mean? There's a little boob joke there for the guys. I love boobs, I've even grown me on. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, there's benefits to being 32. You can have a sit down with you in the morning without, um, you know, feeling lazy. And if I'd have done that ten years before, I'd have probably just got a face full of weight, to be honest. <laughs> but I don't have them problems anymore, not without Viagra anyway. <laughs> But um, I had a mid midlife crisis, you know, a bit of an early one, and I couldn't afford a sports car or a, a fast motorbike, so I did the next best thing, and I bought myself a remote control aeroplane. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I really did. But, um, it took me uh, three hours to build, cost me £350, and uh, 30 seconds to crash. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't a total loss, because I videoed it, and I can send it off to YouTube, and get 250 quid back. It's actually on my uh, iPad at the minute, ready to send off. And there's a the thing. Jeremy Beagle was alive, he would love the iPad, wouldn't he? 
But the other lad is probably prefer the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing about iPhones. You notice anybody that's got an iPhone never just call it a phone. They always go, oh, can you pass me my iPhone? Do you want to borrow my iPhone? But it's not like my ex-girlfriend. She'd never used to go like, oh, have you got a Nokia 52 Tech? <laughs> I'm not saying she had a shit phone, I'm just saying that's how long ago it was since I had a girlfriend. Why I'm on that website anyway. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Luke did mention there that I was a military man, and uh, believe it or not, stand up comedy is just a little bit of fun for me, you know. By day, I'm actually a bomb disposal engineer. Ooh. Ooh. Seriously, I, when people often say to me, is that just something you put in your set to get jokes out of? So no, seriously, I am a bomb disposal engineer. I travel around London looking for bombs, and um, that's when they say to me, ooh, is it the red wire or the green wire? I say, I don't fucking know, I'm not an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, did, I did get into that job by um, being in the army, and I was in the Royal Engineers, a bomb disposal engineer. And whenever I went on tour to um, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, well, I say Iraq, I never actually went to Iraq. I've been to Wan Iraq, Spice Iraq, Iraq. <laughs> Don't get medals, just get wine, spices and tires, you know, I suppose. But whenever we're on tour, we had a t-shirt saying, I'm a bomb disposal engineer, and if you see me running, keep up. <laughs> now, uh, I wear a similar t-shirt, Alex, and I'm doing a stand-up gig in a little bit of a dark basement, it's quite scary. If you see me running, it went shit. <laughs> yeah, we're all having a good time, aren't we? But um, yeah, those jobs do go quite hand in hand, you know, like, because by day, I'm looking for bombs, and by night, I'm avoiding bombing. <laughs> I think I'm doing all right tonight, we're all having fun. Yeah. yeah! Good, good, Another few similarities, you know, I'll let you know about these jobs. Um, one of them, you've got to be quite brave, you know, you've got to have a bit of confidence, you've got to be really quick thinking and look at your surroundings and make sure you can do everything. And the other one, you sort of just stand up and tell jokes, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, or the other one, you sort of dig bombs up. I don't know which is more dangerous, to be honest. It's quite a scary card, isn't it? Quiet. Now, um, what else can I tell you about myself? Not a lot really, and I'm quite thirsty, so I think I'm just going to get off because I forgot my drink. And there is a problem with leaving your drink around, you know, it's beer rape. Let's be honest, ladies, I'm a target, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but you will be wasting your time because I'm actually immune to it. Seriously, I went clubbing the other week and I took loads of raw hypnol and nobody fucked me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And besides, do I look like the type of guy that needs to be date raped? I'll shag anyone. <laughs> I was with this woman the other week, she was so big that I couldn't actually kiss her while I was inside of her. I had to come out, walk around the bed, give a little kiss. So I'm just going to go back for a little bit more uh, sex. I'll be back in a minute, all right, love. But to be fair, and I did use a fruit flavoured condom, it's the only way you're going to get one of the five a day into them, innit? <laughs> <laughs> I've been Stephen, uh, you lot have been brilliant. Too.